Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are here on Saturday morning having our Saturday service, Saturday afternoon. Our Saturday service, which always starts at 1215 Pacific. So we are about to read from the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Mm. Boy, I wish the churches could really get together on one accord for a change. Instead of all the bickering and fighting. Oh, back to the word. Okay. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon them uh, sat upon each of them let me read that again and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the holy ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance and there were Dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galatians? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? I'm going to stop there. And I am going to move down to verse 14 because they go back and forth about the languages and where the people were from and all that. And they mocking and Peter starts to describe to them what's really going on. And this is 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of, Ju of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And all my servants, and all my handmaidens, I will pour out in those last days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Wow. And here's your favorite part, Lynn. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determining counsel and foreknowledge of God that ye have taken, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. Wow. Now, I'm not going to go any further. I just wanted to throw that part in that Jesus is resurrected, not still in the grave. Now, this is the reason we are able to receive the Holy Spirit. And... With the Holy Spirit comes many gifts. Now, the reason I read that to you is because a lot of times we argue semantics. And it's really crazy because 
Andrea and I had a part of this conversation and so did someone else and I, but what got me last night was I wasn't thinking about that. We were talking about uh, other things, you know, the gifts, other types of things. But this particularly came in and God led me to deal with these gifts, focusing in on the gift of tongues. And I believe we're going to deal with the, the workings of the Holy Spirit in our lives, the power it brings, the supernatural side of walking with God. And we're going to move over right now to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, there is a reason. <clears throat> Let me say this real quick. This path's too sick. We need the power of the Holy Ghost working in us. One of the main things the Holy Ghost does initially, it seals us. And the Holy Ghost is the way he works. He gets in us and he changes our nature. Now, when we're born, nobody has to teach you the four laws of lying. Nobody has to take you to a college and describe to you through a professor how to cheat. Nobody has to give you a, an all-day workshop on how to steal, how to connive, how to manipulate, hmm, ha, ha, how to argue, fuss and fight. It's all in your nature. It's easy because it comes naturally. Why? Because the Bible says we were born and shapen in iniquity. We came out full of sin out of our mother's womb. We were programmed for sin. That's basically what that means. Pre-programmed. Now, when the Holy Ghost comes in after you have asked for forgiveness and mercy, accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Holy Ghost, you ask for God to fill you with his Holy Ghost, and the change, the metamorphosis begins. Now you go from regret, from natural regret, to godly sorrow. <clears throat> And God's word says, godly sorrow works. Repentance. Repentance is, this is the sign for change, because you're in one position here. Godly sorrow worketh repentance. Repentance, dear heart, is change. It's an about face. You're facing this way, geared towards sin. And then when the Holy Spirit comes in, and anoints your nature with it, with God's nature. All of a sudden, you're doing about face. And now, you're facing this way, righteousness. And everything in you is sensitive now to the sins that you could care less about before. So that's one of the workings of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit brings conviction. It lets you know when you're wrong. It lets you know when you're not on the good foot. Mm -hmm. It lets you know when you're jealous. It lets you know when you're angry without a cause. It lets you know when you need to go back and apologize because you hurt someone's feelings, even if they were the ones that started it and they were wrong. It's the way you handle that the Holy Spirit will govern and readjust because you're used to your old ways. But the Holy Spirit puts a new governor inside, so to speak. And you go by, you dance to a different beat. You move to a different rhythm. You're going on a different uh, speed limit now. You're not able to be a runaway train like you used to be because the Holy Spirit said, ah, 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 ah. All right, 
So that is one of the workings of the Holy Spirit, one of the many workings. Moving into the gifts, the Holy Spirit. Now, the workings, I got to go back first. The workings of the Holy Spirit changes our nature. What comes from changing our nature is what we call fruits of the Holy Spirit. Those are fruits of righteousness, love, joy, peace, mm, mercy, faith, hope, long-suffering, patience, kindness, all of that. Those are what you would call in today's words, the characteristics of God himself. Well, when God's spirit comes in you, your, your characteristics diminish while God's characteristics increase over time as you allow. Because the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. So you are still in control as to how much you allow the Holy Spirit to readjust you. If you are rebellious, hard-hearted, and you got your own little way of doing stuff, and you're, you're hard-headed, it'll take the Holy Spirit a while. But remember, the Bible also says his spirit will not always strive with you. I'm trying to pack a lot in real quick as a quick preview as to why God fills us with his Holy Spirit. We cannot remain saved long without falling back into our unrighteous ways without the power, the supernatural, do the most power of God working within us to change our nature as we submit to his leadership. And yes, there will be times when you want to do things your old way and God will say, ah, ah, ah. and you will have to decide right at that moment, the ball's in your court. Do I do it my way anyway, or do I slow my roll, hit the brakes, and make an about face and do it God's way? Because now you got two things going on. Before, you were, it was all about what you want to do. Now you got another voice working. And as you allow that voice to work, it will get louder and louder while the voice of your inner being will diminish and wane. And you will become more and more obedient and pliable to the ways of God. And you'll hunger for the ways of God more and more. The more you obey, the more you want. The less you obey, the more you turn back to your own beggarly ways. Now, getting to the gifts now. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> now we're going to read. I just wanted to give you that quick little preview. And we are going now to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. This is starting at verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now, verse 4. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, <clears throat> but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts 
of healing by the same spirit. Okay, let me deviate for a second here. You notice it doesn't say the gift of healing. It says the gifts of healing. Now, my strongest gift in healing is inner healing. And the reason my strongest gift is there is because that is one of the biggest things I've gotten from God is inner healing for myself. So I speak with conviction. It's not just book knowledge. When it comes to my friend Lynn, who is here in our service right now, her gift in healing is more in physical healing. She deals with the physical healing and deliverance and all of that. Well, I deal with counseling, deliverance, and inner healing, but she mainly deals with the physical healing. There are gifts of healing. One young lady, for example, when I was in church, my arm was killing me. It was a horrible case of tendonitis. Now, I don't know what many of you do about tendonitis, but I took it to prayer. And... <clears throat> At the time, we were all praying for each other in church, and my normal tendency is to look for an adult. But what was standing next to me was a 12-year-old child who happened to be saved. And I'm thinking, why go beyond her? She's right here. I'm glad I did that. Because of all the adults that ever prayed for me, this was the only one who was not an adult that prayed for me, and I got instant results. Now, let me share what happened. She prays a dry, dead prayer. It really sounded dead and dry. Can't go by personalities, y'all, by, by his spirit. Not by power, nor by might, nor by personality, let me add. No, by his spirit, saith the Lord. Now, here she is, filled with his spirit. And she says this little dead dry prayer for my arm. She was, she was a sweetheart. She was one of my little sweethearts in church. And she prayed for my arm. And when we got through, an hour had gone by. And I'm just doing what I do, singing in the choir, or whatever we were doing that morning. And I noticed before the man got up to preach the gospel, my arm totally, totally stopped hurting. And that whole week, it was waking me up through the night. It would hurt so bad. Hmm. No adult ever got that kind of response in prayer, praying for me. And here was a 12-year-old child. Y'all need to have your children pray for you. I'm not going to go any further. If they're saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, y'all need to use every gift they got. Stir them up. You never know which one will get you the blessing. Hmm. Now, moving right along. <clears throat> excuse me. Moving right along. We already read, For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, the gifts of healing, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy. Now, I would love the working of miracles, but for some reason, I didn't get that one yet, yet. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, divers kinds of tongues. Divers means different kinds, all right. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the same spirit Hmm. dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. All right, now we're going to stop there. Let's see. I'm trying to see if there's anything else I need to add. All right, <clears throat> now, when we look at those words, 
we have to remember, don't be jealous of the other person because they have working of miracles. But your gift is word of wisdom. Word of wisdom doesn't sound exciting like working of miracles. Who they laid hands and raised the dead, you know, working of miracles. But let me tell you something. Word of wisdom is powerful because your word of wisdom can save so many lives, can save so many relationships, can save people from tragedy, from devastation, from horrible decisions. Oh yeah, you need that word of wisdom. You know, while you're getting understanding, understanding is a real good thing to have, y'all. You need that. When you're getting understanding, get under get, get wisdom. Ask God, and while you're getting wisdom, get understanding. Those two go hand in hand. Please ask God for that. No matter what, everybody needs wisdom and understanding. It makes life and interaction with each other a lot easier when you can see past their deed to see their need. Okay, now. All right. See, love will drive you to do that. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit, because we love at a different level when we're filled with the fruits of the Holy Spirit that has changed our nature. Right. All right. Now, you have to have heard the beginning of the message to know what this means. I'm not going into explanation. Watch the video. OK, let's see here. Um, now. I am going to one more verse here. All right. And that is, let me see. All right. These are different examples, just to let you know. This is Jesus speaking. Mark chapter 16. Mark 16, starting at verse 15. And he said unto them, go away. I got to read 14 because you just got to know just how resurrected he really was. Yeah, I just love rubbing that in. Mm -hmm. After he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Yes, risen from the dead. Okay, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Okay. Hey, look, don't look at me. I didn't say that. Mm. Okay. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. That's the name of Jesus. For those of you who don't know his name. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. I didn't say that. This ain't no new new age uh, doctrine. He said it out of his own lips. Let me repeat that. Verse 17. In my name, they shall cast out devils. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are devils to cast out. There are demons to battle. All right. They shall speak with new tongues. Hello. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Hmm. All right. Now, the reason I, I read that again is because I wanted to emphasize there was a time when I first got saved. And in my mind, when I ran into some of the born-again Christians that were constantly trying to push the speaking in tongues thing, 
in my mind, I'm saying all that ain't necessary. Check me out now. Check me out. I didn't know. I had no idea that my Lord and Savior said it out of his own mouth. Now, by the same token, by the same token, we're going back because I want you to see this. I want you to see with all the diversities of tongues, I mean, all the diversities of gifts, I want you to see something. And I got to, I'm hoping it's here. Yes. Okay, let me see. There we go. For those of you who have not yet spoken in tongues, don't despair. That does not mean that you are not filled with the Holy Ghost because, this is why I say this, one verse says they were filled with the Holy, the Holy, the Holy Ghost and they spoke the word with boldness. Another one says they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they prophesied. Did not say they spoke in tongues. Now, this is what I want you to look at. We need a balance. It's not all a blanket statement and it's this way or the highway because God is flexible. Listen. See, some, of, some people have built up a fear against the supernatural gifts of God. So when it starts to happen, they, they shut it down. They're afraid. Or they're afraid to even let it loose. They're afraid that it'll be a runaway train and they won't know how to control it because people want to be in control. So this is what God takes all of our nature into consideration. And this is what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Starting at verse 28. And God had set some in the church. First, apostles. Secondarily, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles. Then, gifts of healing, helps, governments, the diversities of tongue, tongues. Here's the question. These are rhetorical questions. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. And I'm just reading the first verse of the next chapter because it is the foundation of everything you do. And if it's not there, baby, you better go back to the manufacturer and get a, a refill because something ain't there, mainly the Holy Ghost. And this is your main ingredient, the common denominator for all of it, the foundation. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, and for those of you who don't know what charity is, it's not giving a few bucks to a nonprofit organization. When King James talks about charity, charity means love. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or tinkling cymbal, which in today's language, I would uh, paraphrase by saying, if I don't love baby like God loves, guess what? I'm nothing but an empty can making a whole bunch of noise. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, love, I am nothing. Now that'll put a balance on that. For those of you who speak in tongues for hours, but you cuss your neighbor out in a New York minute. For those of you who speak in tongues and you beat your wife up every other week. Mm -hmm. Think about that. See, God's gifts and callings are without repentance. 
But that doesn't mean your gift is anointed if you're living an unholy life. I'm not going to drink from a water hose that's been siphoning out waste. No way. And I will not feed at your table through an unclean spirit. And I hope those of you who know me, if you see me turn to the left or to the right, don't you sit at my table and hear me preach. You better pray for me. Get on my case. Tell me to line up with the word of God, but don't feed off of my word if I'm not living a holy life. Because even though God's gift operates, it doesn't mean it's anointed. It's anointed. All right. Now that we put a little balance on that, understand. One woman I know, thank you, Lord, for bringing it back to my memory. One woman I know said she was walking down the street. I've known her for years. She's walking down the street. And this is one of those travailing in the spirit things that happen for those of you who are called to intercessory prayer. Prayer warriors, intercessors. She's walking down the street and all of a sudden she's doubled over and she's so weak she has to sit down on the curb. And you know that's not ladylike. But she sat her little new her little three piece suit down on the curb. She had no choice, either sit or fall. So she sat, and while she's sitting there, the tears are coming. She's just crying, this uncontrollable sobbing and wailing, and she and people are trying to comfort her. She didn't know what was going on. And she, it's just coming and coming and coming and coming and coming. And everything in her, everything in her said, go home, go home, hurry, go home. Now, while she's travailing, she's praying in tongues. The tongues just start spilling out of her, just coming, 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 coming. I've never had that. I spurt in tongues here and there. That's not been one of my strongest gifts. But anyway, some just flow for hours. <laughs> I wish I could get to that. <laughs> Help me, Lord. Okay, now this woman was there. She was, she was just going at it. She gets home. She gets home. The fire department is there. Her house had almost been consumed. But something happened. And the fire that should have exploded the whole house was able to be contained by the firemen. And what did ignite was against reason because the firemen who study fires, who study fumes and all of that, and they study the things that are highly flammable, were letting her know that the house should have been totally consumed by them. And she just had a little damage that needed to be fixed by the insurance company. That's it. She was able to go back in her house and sleep there. No problem. God, I'm telling you, God will use those gifts. With her, it was intercessory prayer. But she prayed in tongues. Now, there are two Let's go into a couple of types of tongues. That's why it says diversities of tongues. Y'all stop trying to put tongues in a box. If you can't put God in a box, quit trying to put his gifts in a box. The Bible calls it diversities of tongues, which means you cannot decide how many ways tongues is going to operate. If God can create language at the drop of a hat in front of the Tower of Babel and everybody got... Everybody got dispersed because they were talking in all these different languages, just like that, split second. One minute they're talking common language as they put their minds to build this tower, and the next minute God confounds them, confuses them with all these different languages, just like that, boom. If you're not speaking a language that someone else has understood 
or someone else in the crowd knows an intelligible language and it sounds like you're speaking some other's made up language, don't be in judgment because if God can create a language at the drop of a hat at the Tower of Babel, he can create one at the drop of a hat through you right on the spot. So there will be tongues that are intelligible languages. There will be tongues that are basically for your edification. And it doesn't have to be an intelligible, an intelligible language. It can be groanings and stammering of tongues. It can be all kinds of sounds coming out of your mouth that are interpreted by, I have done that where the Holy Spirit would quote scripture to me after I said whatever I said, as weird as it, sound, as it sounded. So don't sit there and think that because it's not Spanish, it's not Zulu, it's not uh, uh, Portuguese, that it's not a legitimate language. It's not a language God would give. God gave languages, boom, just like that during the days of the Tower of Babel. Think about that. How can he not do it now? God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So who are you to limit God's abilities. Now, yes, there are some people out there that aren't anointed to even wave a hand at God. They wouldn't know God if he, if he pinched their nose. They wouldn't know. Him. And they're out there talking gibberish. Ain't doing nothing but faking the tongues and imitating all the sounds they've heard from other people because they were raised in church and they ain't living nothing. But let me tell you, God can give tongues at the drop of a hat. Whatever he chooses to use as a gift. Let me share this with you. Here's another gift. The gifts of healings I was talking about. One of the gifts I know I have in physical healing, my anointing is in limbs, the legs. Now this girl's anointing that prayed for my arm, I don't know how many other gifts of healing she has, but there are some gifts that work quicker than others. And whenever I pray for people's legs, that's when I get quicker results. If they have knee pain, or if they have, like my father's legs were killing him, where you could barely touch like that. And he, oh, no, no. And so I had to just basically feather touch his legs while I prayed for healing. And I feather touched it and feather touched it and asked the Lord to help me give him a good massage because I could tell he needed the circulation. So I'm praying for his legs and I'm praying. I, I had propped him up in a lift and dropped him down in his chair and eased his legs. It was a very long process because he was in such pain. And I got on the floor and got the oil and the lotion and I just prayed for his legs. Feather touch at first, feather touch, feather touch. And then before you know it, after about two hours of praying and rebuking pain, and commanding his legs to build up circulation as I massaged. There, I was literally deep. You know how they do the deep tissue massage, the kind, you're like, well, what you trying to do, break my arm? Yeah, that kind of massage. I was doing all that in his legs, and he never had any pain since. Never, never, never again. My, ne my next door neighbor came by, and now I barely did any touching on her. She came by, and that's how I know I have the anointing for the legs because those prayers that I pray for people, they'll usually get more of an instant result. She came over to see if my father needed anything. She was his home chore worker, as well as our evangelist. <laughs> She's the one that prayed me into the kingdom. And she was sitting at the dining room table 
And I asked her, I said, why are you limping so much? Because she limped coming in the house. I don't know, girl, my leg is hurting. It's been hurting all day long. And I got angry because I'm thinking this woman serves God blindly. No way should she have to deal with anything. So I got an attitude. Sometimes a little attitude helps. And I I got the little oil, and all I did was just, you know, I rebuked pain in the name of Jesus. Didn't say anything fancy or long. It was probably about a two-minute, maybe a one-minute-and-a-half prayer. Very simple, very quick, to the point. Her husband calls her, and she jumps up. Just a minute, Steve. She jumps up to see what he needs. And when she gets to the front door, she turned around. She said, Pat. And I said, what? My legs stop hurting. That was the end of the limping. So God, when he anoints you with a gift, you have to remember it's him doing it, not you. It's just the gift that he's given you. Just use those gifts as much as you can. And remember, don't take the credit. Okay, back to tongues, back to tongues. Now, I'm going to break it down real simple, and we're going to end it. I don't want to drag it out long. But what I want to say is this. The way tongues operates, okay, we dealt with the fact that God can create a language at the drop of a hat, or you may actually speak a language. One woman said in her mind, she thought she was saying she was just testing God, right? And she was like, you know, yakety yak, blah, 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 blah. She wasn't trying to say anything. But what the people heard coming out of her mouth was a language from their nation. And they told her what she said. And she was like, no way. That's when she was convinced. And when they, I think they recorded, I'm not sure. She had, you know, hearing was believing. Now, this is what I want to say to you. When you work in the gifts of tongues, when you deal with it in prayer, tongues is for intercession and or self-edification. Rivers of living waters flooding up in your soul. The ministry is to you. It's between you and God in private. When you prophesy, when you speak in tongues and there's an interpretation, somebody should have an interpretation. Don't matter if it's you or somebody else. Somebody ought to have an interpretation or else it wasn't meant for the crowd. It's for you. But not all the time does it turn out that way because there are people who are full of fear. One woman at a church in L.A. told Pastor Reed, I really apologize. She called him at his house. She said, I'm really, really, really sorry. I know you sat the sister down when she spoke in tongues and nobody interpreted. She said, but it was legitimate. I was just too afraid to stand up and say anything because I'm afraid of crowds. She said, God was warning for, for everyone to stay in that there were going to be riots in the street. Some day, some particular period of time, that she knew and, she, you know, the interpretation came. And what happened was the Watts riots right after that. So that shows that it's not always the person who's speaking in tongues. Don't be afraid to take the chance. Yes, they're taught well, so if they're sat down, it's not a point of embarrassment. It just means something didn't follow through. Okay, thank you, sister. You may have a seat. No disrespect, nothing to be embarrassed about. We're learning how to operate in these gifts. The Bible says we prophesy in part. We know in part. We see in part. Whatever we do on this earth, baby cakes, it's in part. You do not have the corner market on God's gifts. Nobody does. And nobody is 100% accurate. So don't even try it. All right. But. Thank God for his grace that allows for the room, for the margin of error. And we have to be gracious to one another. Not be like, oh, that's just a false prophet. No, nah, wait a minute now. <laughs> wait a minute. Things were hard back in the day in the Old Testament. We're called to mercy. So it may be that 
God repented, just like what's his face when he went to Nineveh, Jonah, when he went to Nineveh and he prophesied their doom and their judgment and he left. What did they do? They, they communed together and fasted and got their act together. And guess what? The judgment didn't take place. That did not make Jonah a false prophet. That made God a merciful father that acknowledged that the mission was accomplished because instead of them being judged, it forced them to do the right thing, which was repent. And because they repented, God changed the call on that. See, the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and will heal their land. So even if judgment is pronounced over you, baby, as long as you can inhale, you better get your act together and repent and get your you know, line up with God's will. Who knows? He may stay the hand of judgment off your life. See, so because everything doesn't always happen as a person prophesies, and I'm not talking about these YouTubers that I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a legitimate person prophesying does not mean that because it didn't happen, they falsely prophesied. No, it meant that God his heart was turned because the person they prophesied to did everything they could to stay the hand of God. You never know what's going on behind. God may give you an assignment and have you go on down the road. And whatever the results are, none of your business. That's between them and God. And your prophesying could save. It doesn't have to kill, baby. It can save. All right. So, oh my goodness. I, I'm not exactly sure where else to take this. I'm just trying to give you a glossing over a covering so you understand. Uh, and here's another thing. Here's another thing. When you speak with tongues, if it comes, don't shut it down. Let it come. Let it come. Jesus said in his words, his words now, they shall cast out demons in my name. They shall speak with new tongues. So not everybody does everything. We know that. But the bottom line is, do not think of yourself as missing the mark because you haven't spoken in tongues yet or you've never spoken in tongues. There are people that go through life, go to the grave, go to, to meet their father in heaven who have never spoken a word in tongues. That doesn't negate their salvation or them being filled with the Holy Spirit. They may have been walking in love. As the, as the guy said, I'd rather that you prophesy rather than speak in tongues. So there are people who never speak in tongues, but they prophesy. They may not speak in tongues, but they have words of knowledge. They can tell you stuff about you that only the Holy Ghost can reveal. Whatever gifts of the Holy Spirit are working, the person's got to have the Holy Spirit for it to work. Okay, so that's just a matter of two and two. That doesn't even take a supernatural revelation to get that one. In order to get wet, something liquid has to be on you, right? Okay, anyway, so, <laughs> yeah. So you cannot operate in any of the gifts of the Holy Spirit without being filled with the Holy Spirit. And you cannot love the way God loves. Bible says this, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. Can't operate in love unless you're filled with the spirit of the living God. Okay. There are times when I used to be around the different people at church, I would wonder, oh my goodness, I feel so much love. I feel, oh, I'm just, I'm just overflowing with this love. It just felt so beautiful. Just come out of nowhere. I'm feeling all this love. Just want to hug everybody. Tell them I just love you. I just, 
Yeah, it felt like it, you feel syrupy sweet sometimes. But that comes from the love of God. He'll make you love people that you normally would have. Mm -hmm. Because he also gives you understanding. Love brings understanding. Love brings patience. Love brings long suffering. You see, all of it comes together. Can't do that without the Holy Spirit, babe. You cannot live a holy life. Not God's way. Based on the right motives, you can't do that without the Holy Spirit empowering you. So every one of you who has given your heart to the Lord, ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit. Ask God to do that, please. It makes it so much easier. Mm. Father, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus, that you would bless us, that you would pour your spirit out on us, that you would anoint us, Father, for your get with your giftings and callings, Father. Make your callings evident in our lives. Help us, Lord, to stir up the gifts that are within. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Now I'm just going to say this real quick. Some of your giftings will come 